<coughs> is this thing on? Hello there. My name is Dr. Rick Sanchez, and for many decades now I have been studying food culture, and I have come to the conclusion that meat eating is a mental disorder, which I call carnism. Sufferers of this illness make up absurd delusions to justify this insane habit of eating meat. And one of the most delusional and psychotic patients to have ever entered my care was Lierre Keith. When Lierre was first admitted to our hospital, she was suffering severe psychosis, and she believed that she was some sort of wild animal that could only eat raw meat. I'm your friend, Dr. Rick Sanchez, remember? Now please put down the rat and- Oh dear god, she just ate a rat. Grab the tranquilizers and penicillin. After some medicating, she eventually became somewhat intelligible, but she began rambling on about how human beings can not digest vegetables. And the problem with protein that comes from plant sources is that it's wrapped in cellulose. And we have no way to digest cellulose. You know, we're not ruminants. Yeah, that's true. We've got the one stomach. We don't have that vat of bacteria that can do it for us. So we can't eat grass. Um, we have no way to digest it. I tried to explain to her that fiber is beneficial to our digestion, but I just couldn't get through to her. And when I tried to feed her healthy vegetables, particularly broccoli, she had extremely violent outbursts. Now, Lierre, you need to eat your green vegetables to be healthy. We talked about this. Now just please <coughs> take a- ah! She bit me! Grab the tranquilizers and penicillin. And unbeknownst to most people, the original title of her book was Vegetarians Are a Myth, as she thought it was absolutely impossible for a human being to live on a plant-based diet. So we can't get to the protein. That's why it's called poor quality protein, um, oh, is because oh. we can't get to it, and it's not complete. So right away you've got the protein problem. Um, and so it's not really assimilated by humans. And then there's the fats. There are fat-soluble nutrients that you cannot get from plants. Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K2, vitamin E. But of course, mentally sane people understand that it is quite possible to get all the protein and vitamins one needs on a vegan diet, and we synthesize things like vitamin D and vitamin A from things like the sun or beta carotene, but because of what I call the carnist delusion, they need to make up these fantasies around their meat-eating habit. You know, your brain is almost 80% fat. You've got to eat it. So Another one of these carnist delusions that Leah Keith suffered was she had the idea that plant agriculture caused the human race to be riddled with diseases that had never existed before in our history. The other thing that you find in the archaeological record is that humans are long and tall and strong and they keep all their teeth and, and their bones are disease free until you hit agriculture. And then suddenly everybody shrinks six inches and they lose their teeth and their bones are riddled with disease. And we have a concept, the diseases of civilization. There is no such thing as the diseases of hunter-gatherers. But of course the domestication of animals and the Use of livestock, of which Lierre Keith is in favor of, is what is causing our most common chronic diseases and has created our most common infectious diseases as well. You see, animal products increase inflammation through several pathways, and the high amounts of branched-chain amino acids and lipids found in these animal products increase risk of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes, among many other common chronic diseases. And of course, around the same time we were harvesting plants for food, we also discovered how to domesticate animals. And because of our close proximity to these animals, we ended up contracting their diseases. Cows likely gave us measles, the domestication of ducks gave us influenza, and horses gave us the common cold. You know, your brain is almost 80% fat. You've got to eat it. So and I suppose we have to talk about her absolutely bizarre thoughts on the sustainability of animal agriculture. Because we are going to have to give up agriculture if this planet has any hope. You can take one acre of land and you can do two different things. On that acre you can wipe everything off it, so plant to corn, dump a whole bunch of fertilizer on it. With all that corn that you can grow on one acre, you can then take it 
to tortured animals living on concrete, feed them that grain, and at the end of the year, you've got two cows. On that acre of land, you minutes. can leave it alone. Yes. You can still have all the, the prairie that should be there and leave the grass alone. The cows will eat the grass. Um, and at the end of the year, you've got two cows that can feed the same number of people. So one way kills everything. The other thing is a system that could go on forever. I just couldn't get through to her and her psychosis wouldn't let her accept the fact that cattle rearing is causing more greenhouse gas emissions than driving cars, and it's threatening to destroy all life on the planet. Yet, she's concerned about vegetables ending her life. You know, your brain is almost 80% fat. You've got to eat it. So When I was a younger man, I used to think that if I could just get these people to try a vegan diet, it would snap them out of this carnist delusion, but in Leah Keith's case, it's just not so. She admits to never even being vegan, yet she has some issue with cognitive dissonance where she says she was vegan for 20 years. Part of how you got into this is you yourself were a vegan yes. for 20 years. So 20 we're years. You're once a week, vegans eat beef, which to me was a shock because I never cheated on beef, but I certainly binged on eggs and dairy every chance I got. It all still perplexes me to this day. I have no idea what could possibly have been going through her mind when she made that book. But in any case, we humans have clearly evolved to eat a plant-based diet Meat only increases our risk of disease, and our behavior and interaction with animals just shows that we are a loving, caring species. Those of us who aren't under the illness of carnism go out of our way to protect and love and care for animals, whereas those like Leah Keith go out of their way to harm and kill them. So hopefully this has brought to light one of the most common mental illnesses that often goes unrecognized. And hopefully this knowledge will help bring an end to the scourge known as carnism, which is not only making us sick and fat, but is also destroying our planet. And of course, thank you for your time. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how. I'd like to do a thought experiment. Imagine that you're a guest at a dinner party and your host serves you a dish that looks like this. Consider whether you'd find this delicious or disgusting. For those who would find it delicious, imagine you find it so delicious that you ask your host for the recipe. And she replies that the secret is in the meat. You use three pounds of well-seasoned golden retriever. Now take a moment to reflect on your thoughts and feelings. Chances are what you had just thought of as food, you now think of as a dead animal. What you just felt was delicious, you now feel is disgusting. Chances are your experience of the meat dramatically changed, even though nothing about the meat itself actually changed.